What's up, everyone? It's Karthik with MoneyVest. So I've got breaking news for all of you. This was actually released about an hour ago that the Federal Reserve and the BLS are going to revise their jobs numbers from last year up until March of 2024. This is actually quite a big thing because we could see a revision upwards of 1 million jobs. And that's what we're going to discuss here in this video. And the revision comes in tomorrow so tomorrow actually could be a very very volatile day volatility was already up over eight percent on the day today and we of course finally snapped an eight day winning streak here with the nasdaq down a little bit over 33 basis points the s p 500 down over 20 basis points and the dow jones also dropping over 61 points on the day so before we move forward i've got the message of the day, this really just warms my heart. And this was from Raj. Uh, Raj, he basically said that trimmed some of my positions today with $14,000 profit and raised some cash. Credit goes to Karthik as I followed his guidance on Black Monday uh, pre-orders. And thank you for this. Never imagined by spending a small fee to join the subscription will help me gain thousands of dollars. So again, if you want to join, link's going to be down below if you are interested. And of course, taking advantage of our MoneyVest community, nothing would really make me more satisfied and fulfilled if we as a community it's not just me myself we have a lot of people that are here to help you and support you uh, in your journey when it comes to investing and trading so if you have any questions please do let us know and uh, again you can engage and interact with over thousands of experienced traders and investors globally access all the members only private videos high quality research and data my buying spreadsheets uh, as as well as my trade alerts and ideas all the money vest platform you know, in-depth analysis over 17,000 stocks. So everything's going to be available with the link down below. And there is a 16% annual discount that expires at the end of this month. We'll love to have you on board. So S&P 500 and NASDAQ snaps an eight-day winning streak as rebound rally pauses. And this right here is the big breaking news and the catalyst that I really, really want to break down here. And that is the Fed confronts up to 1 million US jobs vanishing in a revision. I don't know about you guys, but I'm really starting to not trust this current administration. So again, I'm not going to get political here, but it starts to really feel if there's a, if there's a misrepresentation of a million jobs, a million jobs, we're talking 1 million jobs in the US could get revised down. BLS issues a preliminary benchmark employment revision Wednesday. Economists still view the jobs growth as healthy, albeit moderating. So the U.S. job growth in the year through March was likely far less robust than initially estimated, which risks fueling concerns that the Federal Reserve is falling further behind the curve to lower interest rates. So Goldman Sachs and Wells Fargo economists expect the government's preliminary benchmark revisions on Wednesday to show payroll's growth in the year through March was at least, at least minimum 600,000 weaker than the currently estimated about 50,000 a month. So U.S. jobs growth in the last year could be revised down by 1 million. This again came out just a few hours ago, which is actually quite crazy news because this is going to once again, we're going to come over to our unemployment spreadsheet here. I'm going to break down what that means for unemployment rate, but as many as 1 million job uh, could vanish from the U.S. jobs data in revised numbers released this week. Jobs growth in the year through March was likely much lower than initially estimated. And uh, this could refuel concerns that the U.S. economy is not as robust as it has appeared and that the Federal Reserve is falling behind in its aim to lower interest rates. The government will release its first revision of jobs growth data on Wednesday. So we're going to get that numbers tomorrow. And then the final numbers are due early next year. Uh, Goldman Sachs economists expect the jobs growth for the year will be at least 600,000 weaker than the current estimates. And if you read further, a downward revision of more than 501,000 jobs would be the largest in 15 years. So if you get a downward revision of more than half a million jobs, it'll be the largest in 15 years which is what Bloomberg reported. And uh, that would suggest the labor market has been cooling for longer than that than what was originally anticipated. And this is the insane number. So US economy added 2.9 million jobs in the year all the way through March of 2024. That was according to BLS, Bureau of Labor Statistics. That's the agency, government agency that reports these numbers. That's an average of 242,000 per month. So you're essentially, essentially taking 292,000 uh, excuse me, 2.9 million, so 2.9, and then dividing it by 12. So you get 241, 242,000. That's the number that you get on a monthly basis. And once a year, the government revises the March figure 
using a more accurate and detailed quarterly data source. And if the total revision is as high as a million, monthly jobs gain would be around 158,000 or 1.9 million and not 2.9 million for the entire year. And uh, Wells Fargo economists also expect to see gains fall with the revised figure. A large negative revision would indicate that the strength of the hiring was already fading before this past April. Wells Fargo economists Sarah House and Aubrey also said in a note last week, they said it could increase concerns over the state of the labor market given the softening in the labor market data as well. Now, this right here is our unemployment numbers. And what we have really identified here is all the previous major times we have seen recession so covid uh, great financial crisis the dot com bubble and the great inflations of 1970s and uh, what we have done is of course we've got the us population here uh, we've got the age of 16 plus so basically the percentage of population that is above the age of 16 uh, that is you know eligible to work and that's the total eligible workers over here then we've got the participating population. So above the age of 16, so total eligible workers, but of those people, what is the participating population that is actively looking for jobs? And this right here is the unemployed persons. So what we really do is the way the unemployment rate is calculated is taking into account the 7.16 million unemployed persons divided by the total participating population. And that's how you get that unemployment rate of 4.3%. Now, if there's over a million jobs that are going to vanish, that are not really there, uh, that were just like misrepresented data, which is actually quite crazy to think about. Like, I can't even, I can't even fathom the fact that there is one million jobs that they reported that are not really there, that are not really there. Like seriously, what the heck is this? Because then, you know, we could, of course, some people may have two jobs, some people may have part-time jobs, but if this number starts to accelerate further, right? So let's say that we go up to as much as 8 million here, we're automatically looking at a pretty big jump in unemployment rate. Even if it goes up to, let's say, 7.5 million, we're looking at a 4.5% unemployment rate, right? Not the 4.3, not the 4.2, not 4, but 4.5 or higher if this gets revised down significantly and we see unemployment persons, unemployed persons actually do get revised up in a more accurate report, it's possible that unemployment rate is actually much higher than what they're actually reporting it to be. It's possible that unemployment rate is higher than what we are actually getting the data for. 4.3% could still be something that is reasonable, right? As I mentioned, 4.3 is actually not that bad. But the reality could be much worse because elections right around the corner. Election is quite literally right around the corner in less than two months. Um, and so it's possible a little over two months. So it's possible that they maybe, maybe again, this is speculation on my part. I don't have any evidence for it, but they may be misrepresenting some of the data here. So again, we just have to be very careful because these big revisions can really throw market market expectations um, in a whole world of chaos. Uh, because markets are pricing in one thing and then you get a revision which is that big and markets expectations change completely uh, for for the overall economy. Now, one more thing that happened, which was released today earlier in the morning, was the U.S. corporate bankruptcy filings increased to their highest level since 2017. So we're hitting our highest level in over seven years. So the U.S. New bankruptcy filings hit 6,276 in the second quarter of 2024, the highest level since Q2 of 2017, and the number of companies declaring bankruptcy has doubled in just two years. So that just goes to show how much of an impact the higher interest rates have played overall role in the small cap, small business world, small to medium businesses. Chapter 7 filings, also known as liquidation bankruptcies, reached a whopping 3,151 in the second quarter, the most since 2020 pandemic. And Chapter 11 cases hit over 2,400 last quarter, exceeding every other quarter over the last 10 years. And then finally, Chapter 13 and other bankruptcy rose to 469 and 194 respectively. Bankruptcies have been rising at a pace seen during the major economic downturns. Is a soft landing still attainable? That's the question which is going to be a very, very difficult question to answer. Also, tomorrow we've got the FOMC minutes coming out at 2 p.m. Eastern, as well as the 20-year bond auction also taking place. So we do have a lot of really important numbers coming out tomorrow, as well as the revision, the preliminary revision from the BLS, which is most likely going to be the catalyst moving the market. And not to mention Jerome Powell speaks at the Jackson Hole Economic Symposium later this week. So 
I feel like the week is just getting started. I think the last couple days were, yes, Monday was pretty strong. Tuesday was basically slightly down. Uh, but I think the week starts now. I think this next three days are actually going to be um, quite volatile. And it's going to be a pretty long three days here because we do have a lot of data points coming out. A lot of volatility is expected in the markets, especially at the Jackson Hole Economic Symposium, as well as the FOMC minutes, as well as the job jobs revision, the 20 year note auction um, and then some other PMI and jobless claims numbers as well. So this is what the markets look like. NVIDIA slightly down about 2%. Broadcom, Intel, uh, everything selling off. Google here slightly up. Apple slightly up. Microsoft was up over 78 basis points. Meta slightly down about half a percent. Amazon over 37 basis points. Energy stocks are dropping as oil prices continue to come down. So it was a little bit of a mixed market. But overall, we did see the aggregate indexes uh, down on the day. Uh, again, mixed on the day here for sectors. Energy was the biggest loser down over 2%. And in the last one week, Every sector is up except for energy, which is slightly down in the last one week. Volatility was higher, as I mentioned earlier, up over 7.5% or close to over 8%. And then we had oats, cocoa prices, soybean pushing up with corn, wheat, lumber, and sugar prices selling off. Bitcoin just under 60,000, Ether just over 2,600 as well. So coming over to our dashboard. So if you take a look, we are still well within a dip. So still less than 2% away from all-time highs for the S&P 500. The Dow Jones, the Nasdaq is less than 5% away from its all-time highs. So we are in a dip now. And a lot of these companies, Magnificent 7, Apple's in a dip, Meta's in a dip, less than 3% away from its all-time highs. Amazon, just over 11% away from its all-time highs in a bit of a correction. Microsoft's in a bit of a pullback, down only 9% away from its all-time highs. NVIDIA, what a solid recovery NVIDIA's seen, less than 10% away from its all-time highs, still well within a pullback, although it did drop over 2% on the day today. Uh, Tesla's in a bear market, down over 46% still from its all-time highs. And Google, 12.5% in a correction, Broadcom in a correction, down over 10% from its all-time highs as well. And AMD, although it has been rallying pretty aggressively here, it's still down over 31% from its all-time highs in a bear market at the moment. This right here is the MoneyVest dashboard. Uh, we're sitting at 3.87 for the MoneyVest index. Uh, we got 15.87 on the VIX reading. We are in the 38th percentile. Uh, almost 70% of stocks trading back above their 50-day moving average and about 73% of stocks trading back above their 200 simple moving average. Both of these numbers are in the 66th percentile with the PCC index put call ratio actually increasing a little bit to 0.815 in the 18th percentile and the RSI at over 61 getting closer and closer to somewhat overbought conditions at almost 70th percentile. So we are mostly red and yellow suggesting for the risk reward still not quite favorable um, at the moment. So that's where we are with the MoneyVest dashboard. Coming over to volatility first, so we did see a little bit of an increase up over 8% on the day, back over to 15.8, almost 16. Um, and again, we're keeping a close eye as we have seen a pretty epic crush on the VIX from highs of over 65 down to as low as 14.7. So again, the next buying opportunity for us is going to be roughly around here inside this green rectangle. Be ready with cash, be ready with buying powder, um, you know, buying power and of course dry powder here so that you can deploy once again, so again, coming back to the message from Raj, uh, you know, mentioning that there was buying opportunities, risk rewards were very good. You had to take advantage. And if you did, of course, you ended up making pretty significant gains in percentage terms and in dollar terms, um, you know, ended up making pretty nice profit. And that's the whole idea, right? When the risk reward is good, we strike. We don't hold back. We don't think twice. We don't wait. We strike. When the risk reward is good, I buy. Regardless of what's going on, blindly, eyes closed. I deploy cash, even if it's even if that means just a little bit of buying opportunity. So keep a close eye on volatility. Uh, next level sitting roughly at 18 to 20, all the way up to 23. Uh, and again, coming over to the MoneyVest index, we are at 3.92. This number will get revised down a little bit to 3.87 after the market's closed today. If everything is closed out, we're going to see a little bit of a downtick um, as volatility increase and we had some of the other indicators come down and the overall market's also pulled back a little bit. So keep a close eye on these two really important indicators. Crude oil continues to come down. So we are now down almost 1% trading at $73 a barrel. So this right here, is going to be that level to watch as an area of demand, that green support level that we have talked about on the channel for crude oil, sitting roughly at $72, $73 a barrel for this particular commodity. Uh, coming over to the 10-year treasuries. Now, this is actually quite important that I want to discuss, and that is the overall uh, relationship 
with the U.S. 10-year treasuries, which, as you can see, it's been coming down. So it is starting to roll over a little bit. 3.8% is where we're at. And, uh, you know, we discussed some of the really important levels. So this right here is going to be that first level at 3.775, uh, down to as low as next support here in this range of 3.3%. So in case we see some dovishness from the Federal Reserve, especially, especially after uh, the jobs numbers do get revised by almost up to a million and we see unemployment rate maybe taking higher in our next report, there is possibility for some potential downside in the 10-year treasuries. What is that going to do to the spread between the 10-year treasuries and the Japanese bond? It's going to push it down further. Why? Because the 10-year treasuries are coming down and the Japanese uh, the, the Japanese rate, the Japanese 10-year rate, or just the, uh, the interest rate over in Japan is expected to increase with more potential rate hikes from the Bank of Japan. If that's going to happen, that's obviously going to squeeze that spread further. Even if that doesn't happen and the 10-year treasuries continue to come down, that's going to push that rate lower. So what I need to do is US 10Y minus JP 10Y. So what that's going to tell us is the spread between these two bonds in the US and over in Japan. And you can see that it's been on a consistent path lower, which is obviously causing significant pressure. And it's squeezing traders and investors out of USD over to Japanese yen to pay back some of the loans that they borrowed, which obviously was part of this carry trade. But this right here is going to be that first level sitting roughly at around 2.82%. But in case we see some more selling pressure and for some more downside, then this right here is going to be that next level to watch sitting roughly at around 2.4% for this particular spread. And what is that going to do to the USD versus Japanese yen? It's going to push it down further. So if I bring over to you guys the USD JPY rate, we're going to bring it up into a new price scale. Uh, you'll notice it actually moves very, very in tandem with each other, right? So this right here is the overall relationship between those two. So what you'll notice, of course, they're pushing up together. They're coming down together. They're going up together. They're coming down together. They're going up together and they are coming down together. As you can see that it's pretty much picture perfect, right? So if I try to match these, you can sort of see how perfectly correlated they are with each other. Uh, why? Because, well, as this spread continues to come down, um, there is less demand for US dollars uh, because it becomes a less favorable trade to borrow in yen and invest in USD. Uh, so as this spread continues to squeeze traders out, what are they going to do? They're going to sell USD and buy Japanese yen, right? That's the unwinding of the overall carry trade. And uh, if that were to continue now, if I bring over the S&P 500, um, you know, especially if you go back to as far as like the beginning of this year. So if you're only looking at um, 2024, let me just go over to the 30 minute time frame. And what we're going to do, we're going to delete everything here. And we're simply, simply just going to be looking at the 2024 data. So what I have here is 2024 spread between the US 10-year bond and the Japanese 10-year bond. And I've also got the um, the USD versus the Japanese yen since the beginning of 2024. Now let's plug in the S&P 500. So SPY on top of this chart. And this is what we get. And once again, what you'll notice, this is the S&P 500 in blue. Uh, it's been very much correlated with the Japanese uh, with the US dollar and the Japanese yen because it's been pushing up very, very well. So this right here is the momentum higher for both of them. Then they both started declining here together. And once we saw that spark in that reversal, once the US dollar started appreciating against the Japanese yen again, this right here was the overall increase in the S&P 500. Of course, the last eight days worth of winning streak. And that was also part of this spread moving back higher. So if these are two leading indicators for us, boom, right here, second right here, well, what is that going to tell us about the markets, right? There is potential for that downside. And that's exactly what I'm here to discuss is because if there is dovishness from Powell, hawkishness from BOJ, a revision in the jobs numbers tomorrow of up to a million, that's going to push the 10-year treasuries down, thereby pushing the spread between the 10-year bond in the US and the 10 year Japanese bond further down, which is going to push the USD against the Japanese yen further down. That's going to depreciate it at, and then of course, SP 500 could follow. Again, I'm not saying that it will, it's just I'm showing you the correlation and how closely related and closely tied these assets are so that we can better understand what is likely to happen, not what's going to happen because nobody really knows at the end of the day what's going to happen, but just something what is most likely to happen as these 
continue to come down and come under a lot of pressure as the two biggest central banks policies collide with each other. Okay, coming back over to um, the markets. So if you come over to this chart, which we have discussed on the channel, which is going to, I believe, be this one. So uh, let's go over to S&P 500, so SPX. Uh, this right here is where we are on the 30 minute time frame. So one of the one of the good things about this entire market rally is that we're now sitting above a very nice, healthy support. So this right here is actually gonna turn into a support now for the S&P 500. So previous resistance now acting as a support here. That's going to be sitting roughly at 55.65. So despite the small 20 basis point drop on the day today, the markets continue to be on a very nice healthy uptrend. And we're coming down to a pretty reasonable support as we discussed. So a little bit of a retest is possible. Again, nothing to be scared about, nothing to be feared from. It's just a, a really strong area of demand. In case we get a breakdown on the back of some of the factors that I just mentioned earlier, then of course, there's possibility for us to retest some of these levels here at 5,400. But right now, all I really want you guys to watch is going to be this support at 5,565. And uh, of course, the next target and the resistance stays put at all time highs at 5,668. So that right there is going to be that next target to watch. But anyway, in, in, in all conditions, if the markets do drop and the money vest index comes down and the volatility spikes, that's going to be a buying opportunity. So I really want you guys to take advantage of that risk reward and of course buy, right? That's that's going to be the overarching message from almost all of our videos to buy when the risk reward is really good because a lot of them end up being short-term negative catalysts, short-term weakness, and we are here to take advantage of that. We are here to take advantage of those opportunities and that's exactly why I think it's important to dollar cost average when the markets are giving you the opportunity and don't be fearful, right? Let the markets come to you, let the prices come to you and take advantage when they are. So that's where we are uh, with the S&P 500. Now coming over to QQQs, also a very nice, a solid breakout um, yesterday. So we're still well within a nice little uptrend, higher highs coming in. So this right here was the previous high. And of course, we just made a new high, slight decline of 21 basis points. But this right here is going to be that support level to watch for um, for QQQs or the NASDAQ 100 here. So that previous resistance now acting as a new potential support that we're going to be watching for QQQs. Coming over to Apple. So on the daily time frame, Apple also continues to slightly move up 27 basis points. And next resistance and target is going to be all the way up to as much as $236. And support level is going to stay put roughly here at $198, close to $200 per share. Uh, again, a lot of consolidation sideways in that range for Apple. So this right here was the consolidation before finally seeing a breakout coming back down to validate this previous resistance as a support and right now resistance is going to stay put at 236 so those right there are going to be some levels to watch here for apple talking about amazon and amazon here continues to move up which is good to see uh you know and resistance all the way up to 189 dollars. so this right here at close to 190 remains the next target and resistance in the area of uh supply for amazon and it's really just been consolidating sideways in that range for a really long time. So we got a very good support here uh, for Amazon in the 160s to as much as 170s. But the next target is going to be all the way to $189 for Amazon. Tesla on the day, closing down a little bit over 73 basis points. Unfortunately, I uh, hate to break it to you, but we are still well within a lower high and lower low pattern for Tesla. Because uh, what you'll notice is... Uh, again, some lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, and lower highs, some lower lows, lower lows, and lower lows. So we are still well within a potential downtrend for Tesla. We're not able to successfully break out some of these levels. And that's why I think it's really important for us to remain cautious, remain calm that Tesla is going to take some time. It's going to take some time before it finally breaks above these resistance levels. First one's going to be sitting at 233 all the way up to 267 to as much as 300. Of course, we got long ways to go before we can, we can even start talking about those levels. But the first levels are going to be at 233, all the way up to 267 for Tesla. Still well within a downtrending channel of lower highs and lower lows at the moment. Uh, talking a little bit about NVIDIA now. So NVIDIA, which has been the star of the show uh, for the entire market rally for quite some time, uh, dropping a little bit over 2% now, uh, rightly so, because again, it was getting a bit more ahead of itself with a, I think, what, a 30 to 40% rally since Monday. So from those Monday's lows, it is up over almost 40%. Uh, very, very overbought on the RSI, the MACD, and the L3 Banker Oscillator, of course, coming up to its resistance of almost $140. And uh, support level 
is going to stay put down to 96 bucks. That's more of a horizontal support, but also we've got a higher low or an ascending support sitting for NVIDIA, roughly around $110 to $109 for this company. Talking a little bit about advanced micro devices, and AMD also has seen a very, very nice recovery uh, back up. So this right here is going to be the monthly chart, but let me just go over to uh, one second. So there we go. So let me just go over to the daily chart here. Very nice uh, recovery up another 72 basis points. Uh, finally broke out above this resistance that we talked about in our previous videos at 156. And we can go ahead and turn this level into a support for advanced micro devices. So this right here will be a support for AMD. And the next target and resistance all the way up to $184 for AMD as well. Support level is going to stay put now at 148 Talking about the big winner on the day, PayPal doing incredibly well. Uh, almost at $72. I did a video on PayPal earlier today. So make sure that you do check that out if you haven't already. Support level is going to stay put at $68. So that there is going to be that support. Next target, next resistance for PayPal is all the way up to $76, $77 for this company. So incredible gains for the company coming in. Um, again, make sure that you do check out that video that I posted earlier today on PayPal. Lower highs and lower lows for Visa. Uh, starting to break out above this resistance. We'll go ahead and turn this level into a support now since it's trading right above this level. And uh, the next resistance and target all the way up to as much as $282 for Visa moving forward. Still with, well within a context of this lower high. So you know, I want to be very clear that we are in this context of lower highs and lower lows. And uh, this right here is going to be that support with that next target, next resistance. There's going to be a near-term resistance sitting right over here at $272 for visa coming over to costco and costco here continues to slightly move up 44 basis points higher next resistance all the way up to as much as 894 dollars that's pretty much the all-time highs for costco i'm going to go ahead and clean up some of these lines uh from the chart and this right here is going to turn into a support at 872 dollars for costco and face stock on the other hand consolidating sideways 116 dollars is where it's at it's got a huge resistance that it's waiting for, 141 bucks. So that's an area of supply that it's not been able to break out for a very, very long time. So that's a level that we're watching very carefully for Enphase. And uh, coming back over to some of the other names here. So for example, Google, actually first Meta. So Meta on the day, consolidating sideways. So there's a, there's a lot of inaction for Meta right now. We got a huge area of supply and resistance at 541. Support level at 458 down to as low as $420 for Meta moving forward. So a lot of consolidation sideways in that range for Meta. Uh, Netflix here, on the other hand, continues to rip higher and higher to almost new all-time highs. In fact, it hit a new all-time highs today, uh, $711. That's incredible. New all-time highs for Netflix. Congratulations to all Netflix shareholders. Uh, but we are, of course, have to consider how overbought and overextended it's now starting to become. So support level is indeed going to be sitting roughly at around, uh, let's see, this right here would be a higher low for Netflix. And that's going to be sitting roughly at around $586, $600 a share. But, uh, but of course, we're starting to break out with a very nice higher high for Netflix as well. And finally, Google and Microsoft. Google had a pretty decent day up over 33 basis points. We can, I think, go ahead and turn this level back into a support now since we're trading right above that level. And uh, if you do continue to see this rally upwards for Google, uh, next resistance is going to be a 176, 177 for Google and a support level sitting roughly at around $166 for Google as well. And finally, coming over to Microsoft, Microsoft here, next target and resistance is going to be a $431. So this right here is going to be that next level to watch for Microsoft with the support level staying put at roughly 400 bucks for this company as well. So hope you all enjoyed this video and a complete update on the markets. Uh, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And what are you up to? Are you buying, selling, holding? What are your plans for this week? The next three days are going to be very, very important. Do join our MoneyVest community. We've got limited spots left with 16% annual discount that's available until the end of this month. I'm sure you can find a lot of value uh, and, and again, a lot of helpful tips and we can be a part of your trading and investing journey. Let us know if you have any questions. We're here to support with over 1,000 members ready and dedicated to help you in your journey. So hope you all enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, make sure you drop a like, subscribe to the channel, share this video with your friends and family and other traders and investors so that it helps us grow our community. And as always, happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.